All right, well, good morning again, everyone. And welcome to the Spokane Dream Center Sunday School. My name is Josh Malzberger. Uh, it's a blessing, an honor, a privilege. I'm extremely grateful and thankful to be here this morning, to be saved by the blood of Jesus, to be here with all of you, to be worshiping our God together, to be celebrating Mother's Day together. And uh, so happy to have my daughter, Joanna, here again. Can you say good morning? Good morning. She's good liking morning. to come up here. So she's got some type of future in public speaking or teaching or, huh? No. Yeah, got, no? Okay, well, sometimes God call is a little beyond our, you know, desire at the beginning, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go back with mom now so I can finish this? No? Okay. Fair enough. Well, all right, sweetie. So we are today going to continue on with testimonies, um, depending on how we fill the time. Now remember what I asked last week. Who here has a testimony? Oh, man, you guys are quick learners. Very, very good. Right? So, so in reality, all of us, if you're in Christ Jesus, we all have a testimony. You know, the extent and the length and the precision of what that pertains to and how God wants to use it determines on, it, it varies depending on the situation. But that's why we need the Holy Spirit. To zero in on the things that God has done, that God is doing, to remind us of those things so that we can bring them up and express them to the world around us, our families, so that they can be encouraged. Because God knows where each and every person is in the midst of their walk. He knows what they need, and he uses the body of Christ to minister to the body of Christ. So thank you, each and every person who's come up and testified about the work and the person of Jesus Christ in their life. Because you have honored God and you've blessed the body. And don't ever stop giving your testimony. So, I've got a couple things to say about Mother's Day. Jojo, I'm going to have you run back with mom, with your mom, okay? And I'll be right there. All right. She does not take no for an answer very easy, very well. Um, I've got a whole... Mother's Day message prepared if everybody zips their lips and says, I don't have a testimony. But I don't anticipate that happening. But I do want to, before we start, pray and just honor mothers. And I know that that is, it can be lo a very loaded time, you know, at, uh, days like this when we are reminded and think back about our own mothers um, and our experiences. Sometimes it can be wonderful. Sometimes it can be painful. Sometimes there's disappointment. There's many different emotions and feelings attached with that. So we need this so much to speak into our feelings, into our emotions, into our experience, and give us God's vision, God's perspective, in order to change the things and rearrange the things even our own experience, and to help us to heal, to help us be encouraged, to give us hope, and a future, and a direction, and a foundation, and an example that maybe we didn't have. God, all throughout the scripture, motherhood is exceptional, and part of God's plan. It's part of God's character in Isaiah 66. It's in the book of Acts. It's in it's, it's all throughout, and I've got all these scriptures I really want to teach. I'm sorry. I've got to get out of the way. We're doing testimonies. It's wonderful. I've got a, I've got a list of scriptures, you know, here, and, and from Jochebed, Moses' mother, to Hannah, the mother of Samuel. Go throughout the scriptures. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Go script. I studied all morning for hours. It's beautiful. And God dealing with Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, and describing his relationship with Jerusalem in Isaiah as that of a mother, like carrying a toddler on their side, on, on his knee. Loving, comforting, nurturing. Those aren't just, see, the reason a mother has those instincts and those capabilities is because that's a part of the characteristic of God. That's who God is. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. When you see a mom comforting her child, you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Anyway, 
I love moms. So we honor you mothers this morning, and uh, we pray that God would speak into your life, continue to edify you, encourage you, strengthen you, use you for the praise of his glory, to bless our children, to bless our families, to bless the world around you. And um, anyway, so I'm going to get out of the way. We've got lots of testimonies, I'm sure. Please, when you come up, introduce yourself. Uh, Please project always in preparation for the next drama so learn to project right learn to project all the way to the back door if you can to one of the people sitting in the back make sure that they can hear you and if they can hear you everybody else can as well um honor and glorify god right we're here to honor and glorify him we all have a past but god has brought us out of that past he's delivered us he's set us free he's washed us cleansed us purified us filled us strengthened us, set us on a new trajectory, and we praise him and honor him and glorify him. Um, yeah. And if I come up and cut you off, it's just because we're, it's time to stop. Or you got out of line. So, <laughs> so just don't do that. Anyway, thank you all for being here. I'm going to get out of the way. So my name's CJ. Can you all hear me in the back? Okay, perfect. So last weekend, uh, my oldest daughter had her chess tournament. And uh, during that time, uh, towards the end of it, Annie, our youngest, started having trouble with breathing. Um, So we took her to the, we found a close emergency room. It was only like five minutes away, which was great. a coincidence um when we got there we were we got put into a bed almost immediately instead of having to wait and go through all of those lengthy admission processes which was great as well and then um we had a nurse that um came in after everything kind of after everything got stabilized she came in and she asked us if she could pray with us and you know, out of the blue so she she had stayed after her shift to be able to pray with us which was wonderful and then we were told that we were going to be transferred to another hospital that had or that was a pediatric uh, specialty hospital in Richland And we were told that it would be more than an hour to wait for the ambulance to be able to transfer us. And then within 10 minutes, the ambulance was there to transfer us over. Um, We got there. um, Everything was still stable. And just over the course of the next two days, through God's mercy and doctors and medication, uh, she got stable. She started breathing again better. And then we were able to go home Monday afternoon. And then throughout the rest of the week, we finished her medication regimen. And uh, now she's perfectly healthy. We don't have to do her medication. Big answer to prayer. So thank you, everybody that prayed. And praise God. Good morning, everybody. My name is Samuel, and uh, I stand here today as a new creation in Christ. Um, I used to let fear, condemnation, and shame run my life. I ran from everything that made me uncomfortable, especially standing up in front of people and speaking to them. Um, but, but now, because of the love of Christ, um, He's allowed me to, uh, or given me the strength and given me the courage to be able to express and to. Uh, share my faults with others. I mean, I'm not perfect. I mean, the Lord's still working on me. I mean, he took Israel on a 40-year journey that should have only taken him 11 days. Um, But I'm still here, and I'm going forward with Christ. And uh, if it wasn't for him, I would have uh, have ran for the hills by now. So um, I just love all of you. I thank you for being my family. And all glory goes to God. Thank you. So I got up here last week and shared, but I just wanted to give a quick testimony. Um, 
On Thursday nights during corporate prayer, I've been praying for my parents, and I'm sure uh, some of you have been praying for my parents too, but uh, I talked to them, gosh, it was like last Wednesday, and they've been, they watched the drama, they've been watching services, uh, I told them about testimonies, so I'm hoping they watched and listened to, or listened to all the testimonies, so uh, it's kind of like a testimony in progress, so I, I think we're going to have good results, I just... I'm just placing all my faith in God, and I think He's going to bring them through. And so, just I just ask that you just keep on praying for Him, and just keep on praying for each other's family. Prayer is effective, and it works. He's listening, and He He will answer. So, thank you. Amen. My name is Samuel Maltzberger, and. My name is Samuel Maltzberger, and I just want to say, God's been good. He helped me get this award for memorizing a ton of verses. (laughs) And here's one of the verses. For I persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So I came up with Sam. I'm Samuel's mom. I'm very blessed to be his mom. Happy um, Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is his excellence award, and in Awana, as you memorize verses, and so um, the excellence award, you get it if you've memorized all those verses word perfect. Um, that means you don't make mistakes in saying the verses. And Samuel had um, didn't get a couple of them word perfect, and he had no idea he could earn this award. But he took the time and went back through his book, took it to his leader, and said, "Hey, I got these other verses word perfect. Can I tell them to you?" And they did. And so then when they did their award ceremony, he got awarded the Excellence Award for getting all of those. And I just want to say I'm proud of him for taking that extra effort. And he's an excellent kid. And <laughs> so he encouraged me to come up here by needing my help with that. Um, I wasn't going to come up here. But then, actually, during the night, I came down with, like, a head cold, and I was not going to come this morning. And Josh prayed for me, and I'm I'm still fighting it, but I feel so much better. Um, but as I was getting ready this morning, I thought, hey, I haven't gone up there and shared a testimony. What I wanted to share originally, Josh shared in the very first week. So, <laughs> so I thought, well, God, do you have something you would like me to share? And so as I was getting ready this morning, because I'm... I'm like the last person that wants to come up here. I'm terrified to come up here. Um, But if God really lays something upon my heart, I'd be obedient and i come up here. And so I was just reflecting. It's Mother's Day. And I was reflecting back on my own mother, um, who was a good mother in her own, in the best way that she could be. She was lost, um, lost and broken and um, was a drug addict and my dad was an alcoholic growing up and but she was a good mom in her own way that she could be it's hard to explain um, but when I was a teenager I was taken away from my parents um, due to some abuse that happened in my family and um, when I was a young adult I was one that I wanted to be the opposite of my parents I wanted to be the goody two-shoe and I didn't want to make those mistakes that my parents made and so um, I strived in my own self to be a good person. Be, I was a Girl Scout leader when I was like 16. And, and then eventually I started playing around with little things, little compromises, um, <clears throat> and then trying to fill that hole that I never knew that I needed Jesus to fill that whole entire time. And so um, I was separated from my parents for a long time. But when I was a young adult, I got a picture of my mother um, on life support, and I didn't even recognize her because um, it had been a few years. And so I decided, well, I have to go. I can't let her die thinking 
I don't forgive her. And I wasn't a believer or anything. I just wanted to go and forgive her. And so I went and I forgave her on her deathbed. And um, my now like adopted mom, my best friend's mom, um, she prayed with her and we just believed that she had asked God into her life so that she could be saved. And so I'm hoping that that's what happened. I believe that that's what happened. But um, that day when she died was the day that I chose to go out and just dive deep into my addiction. That was the day that I, I tried heroin and my life just totally fell apart. Started stealing from my bosses who were just amazing people and just spiraled out of control. Um, and then years later, Josh and I were back living with my dad, who was an alcoholic, um, in my childhood bedroom where a lot of bad stuff had happened because we were lost. And um, the November before I came into the program, I had thought that I was pregnant. And it I, turned out I wasn't. I was malnourished. and But that was my wake-up call because my whole life I wanted to be a mother. That was a deep desire of my heart. And so it was, how do I get out of this? And I reached out to my adopted mom. And she said, well, the only thing you could do is go to the Dream Center, nowhere else. You're not taking you to rehab. Jesus is the answer. And um, I kind of kicked it for a couple of weeks and was like, no, no, no. Um, but then I knew, okay, I got to just give this Jesus. I said, I'll give this Jesus thing a shot. And so um, when I said I was ready to go, it was on December 23rd. And they brought me over on Christmas Eve. And um and I just, I was just reflecting back on everything that all these years later, God's blessed me to be a mother. And I'm just grateful for all the mother figures that are in my life now. And I'm grateful for my own mother, um, for the blessings that, you know, she, when I was, a, when she was pregnant with me, she was going to abort me, but she chose to give me life. And I'm just grateful for that gift. So, um, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm CJ Still. Um, <laughs> so um, another testimony that I have is at work, I am working with this guy that uh, is a believer, but he thinks that Paul is either like a false prophet or um, a tool of the enemy to distract people. So he reads Ma uh, Matthew, John, and Revelations, and that's all he uses out of the New Testament. So I've been talking with him over the last two or three months now and um, it's at work so a lot I'm supposed to be doing some sort of therapy but we're mostly just talking about Paul which is still therapy right um, <laughs> and then uh, over the last couple of few months um, we I was talking with him at this last one and uh, he slowly been like all right well Paul may have started off um, you know as you know, evil, not, you know, not right, um, and lied about his uh, road to Damascus. But by the end, at some point, he turned into a believer. And um, I was like, well, I mean, you have these, you have these other witnesses that talked about Damascus and right. And if he's a believer at the end, when do you start believing that he was a believer? And at what point does that become, what point is that switch? And then I pointed out in Peter, where Peter endorses uh, Paul without having to and he's like okay well I mean kind of had to say that and but not really and then at this last meeting he uh, said that uh, he and uh, God are wrestling about Paul and and uh, he was continuing on with whatever he was going to say after that and I r interrupted him and I said wait you and God are wrestling about whether Paul is real and he said, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so he's slowly turning around and starting to accept the Bible as the truth. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Sorry. Samuel again. Due to nerves, I forgot to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Because of my nerves, I forgot to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. Hello, I am Brianna. Um, it being Mother's Day, I know I've shared um, part of this testimony before, but, you know, um, my mom, so she got diagnosed with cancer in um, 2010. Um, so I was about 22 at the time, and um, it was devastating for me. I was, um, you know, in the throes of my alcohol addiction, and so, of course, what I ran to to heal me and to uh, comfort me was that alcohol and um, during that time that she was fighting cancer I would travel from here to Atlanta where she was living with my sister going through treatment and um, when I would be there you know I would be helping out but the reality was you know I was still so consumed with alcohol that I was no comfort to anybody um, you know there were times I remember even being angry with my mom for things that she needed because I wanted to go to the store and for a long time I, I held such guilt um, and such unforgiveness towards myself and I remember even um, a couple months before she died I was in Atlanta and um, I wanted to come back here because I was in a relationship with somebody and me being gone for so long you know was was causing it harm and things like that and I just remember my mom saying well you know if you're if you're ready to go Brianna um, I'll get you a ticket but that night um, when I was leaving you know she um, she just looked at me and you know she told me that she loved me and she was crying and and I didn't know then but I knew my mom knew then that she wasn't gonna see me again and there I was, you know, leaving for something selfish when I was going to lose my mom in just a few months. And um, it took so many years, so many years for healing to take place. But um, it wasn't until I came to the Spokane Dream Center um, where God really began to um, bring those things to the surface. All the unforgiveness, all the, the hatred I even had for myself and it was actually, um, it was Mother's Day here in 2021. I was interning at the time, and Kelly was up there singing, and she began to just speak a word out from the Lord of healing, that somebody needed healing, that it was time for somebody just to give it to the Lord, and I just crumbled on my knees, and I just began to weep like I hadn't ever wept before, and God used that time to, to bring healing to my heart, and the thing that I'm so gracious to the Lord about is not only did he heal me from that loss, but he has made my heart whole. He has filled every void that there ever was in my heart for missing my mom. And, you know, it took uh, uh, me listening to a phone call of one of the ladies where she was just laughing and, and joyous. And I just I just remember rejoicing with her like, wow, that's so wonderful to, to hear this relationship that she has with her mother. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit just revealed to me that, that I was whole, that I didn't have that void, that empty space anymore, that I could rejoice with somebody else in their relationship with their mother and not long for it myself. Like, yes, there are times where I miss my mom. I want to share things with her. Of course, that's normal. But there's not a gaping hole. There's not a place of anguish. There's not just that place where, where I wish I could go back and do it over again. Because the reality is, is God knew. You know, he knew what would happen, how it would happen. And he already made a way to make me whole again. And, and I'm just so grateful for the Lord and what he's able to do. Something that I, I never thought I could get over. I stand here today. I'm not, not in, in shambles because it's Mother's Day. I'm grateful. And even um, while I was in the program, I, I wasn't sure if my mom was um, really saved or not. I know at the end she really wanted to go to church. And she had always, like, acknowledged that God was real, but there was no following Christ in our family. And so I, I didn't know, you know, and, and I, of course, worried. And But one day, 
through the daily bread as I have these questions in my heart. God just showed me. It was um, the verses in, I believe it's First Thessalonians, um, where it talks about those who um, will, who are apart from us, where, they're, where they are. And God just showed me in my heart that my mom was with her. And even just that, she loved roses and that she is there. And there's the most beautiful roses that she can enjoy. And so now I not only have the peace from being healed, but the peace knowing where my mom is at. And so I just want to encourage anybody that has, you know, suffered loss, especially loss of a parent, that, you know, true healing really is found in Christ Jesus. And just allow him to do it, you know. And there is grieving that takes place, but with the Holy Spirit, you know, there's the comfort as well. And I'm just thankful. Hey, I'm Derek. Uh, Mother's Day has always been kind of an odd day for me because I was raised uh, by a single dad my entire life without a mom. And I wasn't going to come up here, but I just got a text from my dad. And uh, I kind of, with my quirky humor, and when I was young, I think I was like five or six, and um, I started wishing my dad a happy Mother's Day because I didn't have it a mom, and it kind of be became a weird thing between him and I, and uh, he made him uncomfortable for a long time, but I did it this morning, and he was grateful for it, and uh, he, he reminded me when I was little, we, we used to go to church, but I took him a flower on Mother's Day, and it was really awkward, and everybody else was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and uh, he just texted me, and he's like, I remember the time you gave me a flower on Mother's Day, so thank you very much. Um, that's part of it. It's there's a Psalm 2710 says, although my mother and father have abandoned me or forsaken me, the Lord is the one who takes me up and becomes kind of my stead. And God's really ministered in my heart about uh, the Holy Spirit being that comforter side of God that gives me compassion that I didn't have. It's hard to have compassion when you didn't weren't really extended it in your life. So I just became a kind of a hard hearted man. Uh, but by the grace of God, he's entrusted me to to love other people and, and minister. I brought this Bible up here because uh, I get to go to Sunray Court tonight, and it's Mother's Day, and I get to give the word. So God entrusted me to talk about uh, mothers and stuff on Father's Day, and I got no experience. Um, but anyways, it, the Bible I brought because there was a time when I was lost and hopeless, and in 2014 I tried to take my own life and had never really read the Bible, never went to church, had really had no concept of who God was. Uh, but I knew I needed the Lord, and I cried out for help. Uh, and when I cried out to help for help, he was faithful. And I met Pastor Bob in a ABHS treatment center, and uh, he gave me a, my very first Bible in a treatment center. Uh, so now I get to pick up Bibles from my church, being brought full circle to bring to men in treatment centers. So that just shows the, the faithfulness of God to answer when we cry out for help. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So I'm excited. I get to, I mean, that's amazing that he would take me uh, and, and, and trust me with that. So God is good. It's not about me, and he's good, and he's a good father-mother. Not to take that out of context, he's a, he's a very amazing father. But he stands in, a, in the gap and, and loves us. So love you guys. Thank you. Dina Torres. I'm Benito's wife. I don't know if y'all know that. Um, I just want to say that um, I just feel like God has um, always been in my life ever since I was young. Um, I always knew that there was something else out there, I think. You know, just felt a presence or whatever. And he put me in a family that I was always felt blessed to have. I mean, 
it was like I, I was living a dream, you know, we had two acres, we had horses, and, and then we had, had the Hilliard pool where we'd go, and it was just awesome. <laughs> and um, I got into drugs, though, and um, kind of went off the road and for a few years and met Benito, and uh, I said, if we're going to be together, we can't do that. So... Um, we went down to Reno and got clean, and but we didn't have God in our life, and um, kind of did a roller coaster for years, and um, he got saved, and um, then I got saved, and um, it's been a blessing, but it's still been a roller coaster, but God has been with me every step of the way, and I am just blessed every day. And I never thought I would live to see 21. And I told my mom that. And my poor mom, <laughs> you know, broke her heart. But, I mean, she's just been awesome. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Joe. Uh, I don't really share this part of my life much, but now that I was thinking about it, it's pretty important. I uh, I tried to live with my mom when I was 11. I lasted until I was like 15 or so. But then there was this part of my life that I just, man, I don't give enough credit. Um, I had a foster mom. I went to a group home for quite a while, and then I finally went into this home to this amazing woman. She wasn't saved or anything, but she was a really good mom. Um, gave her a heck of a time while I was there. Got expelled from two high schools. <laughs> and uh, did a lot of stupid stuff in her house, but she always put up with me. And it's because of her that I even walked on a stage and graduated on with a diploma. And I just, I don't know, I just, I don't even know what I want to say about it. It's just that I really appreciate this woman. And I know that it was a scent. She was sent from God for me in my life, Amen. you know. Um, yeah, I don't I think I just wanted to share it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Danny. Um, just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies, and and just uh, I really hope you guys have a good Mother's Day. And, and uh, on a side note, um, started my job at Huntwood on Monday, and uh, by day three, God blessed me by being letting me um, excel in that area, and I'm on my own uh, station now, so God's really moving. So. <laughs> uh, Dale, Dale B again. Uh, I just wanted to, I was just sitting there and the Holy Spirit was just, uh, you know, I got to honor my mother and my father. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm not here to judge them. I'm not here to condemn them. I'm just here to, they're my parents and I'm just here to love them, you know, through the love of God, through his love. And uh, they were good parents and, and all they did is they went to work day in and day out and they supported me. They paid they paid all the bills, they took care of all the food, every everything that I needed I had, anything extra that I wanted I, I might have gotten and, and they were just amazing parents and I love them dearly. So thank you. Um, so my name is Alan Johnson and uh, I just wanted to get up here and honor my mom. She's no longer with us, she's in heaven. Um, but. So the reason why I'm here today, the reason why I'm alive and not in prison is because of her prayers and uh, her faithfulness. She adopted me um, based off of scripture. She never married or anything. But she, um, you know, Jesus said anyone who takes 
one of these little ones in for my name and my name I will also accept so I know she's looking down and she's proud of me um, proud of all you guys too <laughs> so I know she's still praying for all of us and uh, I just love her and I'm grateful to God for her and uh, she gave me a heart to adopt Arlington as well so um, it's just cool seeing that blessing pass on from generation to generation so thank you Derek, thank you. Oh, behold, behold. God is love, God is love, God is love. I'm just very grateful for the miracles and the grace that God's given me, man. So it's, I can't even, I don't even know where to start, you know. I don't want to talk about my past, but um, I've been watching this, uh, it's called Chosen, The Chosen, and it's a, um, it's, a, it's a gospel of Jesus, and it shows how he's, um, and it's talking to me and it's saying, it's saying that. Jesus is saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. And um, he, I, I resemble myself. Like me and Peter have something in common, you know. Um, um, I, I like to work. I'm a hard worker. And I've denied the Lord before. And, and um, I really see myself in him. But I, Jesus was asking people. He was asking, um, you know, the tax collector, Matthew. He was asking, hey, follow me, follow me. You know, you could choose the world if you this, and, he, and he's saying that to me, and I was like so grateful. He found me, you know, and I, I didn't, I thought I found him, but no, 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 he found me, and um, he's blessed me so much, and the miracles are just, oh, man, I can't, I can't tell you how powerful this, but so, I have so much joy inside of me, and it feels so good, and I thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, and um, I thank you for blessing me and restoring my life, you know, I, I used to carry these baggage. I had so much baggage, you know, and it was heavy and and worries and thoughts and I was just it was weighing me down. Where do I start? Where do I start to to even my life is ruined, you know? Like I've I've cr I've burned too many bridges. It's been Jesus is like, let me take that bag off you. And I don't know. I can't even think about any problems today. I can't even. Think. <laughs> I just feel the joy. And and so blessed to be around you guys and um, uh, uh, to worship the Lord, you know, together. Um, fellowship. We have freedom and fellowship. And it's just such a blessing to be here. Um, and I just want to thank the Lord. Thank you. God is love. Oh, one more thing. Um, God, one of God's crea um, creations, he said this. I was reading some Shakespeare, and, and he, said if, uh, he said, if love was a word, if love, was, if love was a, a play, play on, play on. And I was like, oh, that's beautiful, you know. So, but uh, thank you, Lord. I, I, I'm all about love, and God is love. God is love. And when I weep before, before Lord, I just say, God is love. God is love. God is love. And, and you know, I cry and cry. Um, and the Lord, he's always answered my prayers. And Solomon's prayer was, uh, you know, he wanted um, wisdom. And um, my prayer was... Uh, I didn't want to ask anything from the Lord because I know how powerful it is. And, you know, when I went down to my knees, I said, Lord, I need guidance, you know. The life is confusing. I don't know. And he just guides me. So I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for allowing me to be here. So thank you. wonderful mother. If it wasn't for her, I don't know what I'd have done. Because my father wasn't there for me a lot of times. And uh, I've been, one thing he did do is he took the whole family, there were six of us kids, and we did go to church. And I had 
God in my heart for as far back as I can remember. Kind of like you, little buddy. And uh, my dad, well, he made me work. And uh, my mom was very good to me. She knew that I was treated a little different, and she always watched over me, and I loved her. She's up there right now. But yeah, I did have a mother, and if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I'd be today. She kept me in church. I backslid. The Holy Spirit came after me. I think I told you all about that. God is good. God is good. And uh, when my mom passed away with a stroke, it was awful hard on me. I didn't want to go to the funeral because that's a final step. But I was backsliding at the time, and I know where she's at now. But anyway, yeah, I had a mother. Happy Mother's Day. I'm not over here. Happy Mother's <laughs> Day to to all of you, you do carry a big part in our lives, very, very big part. I thank you and I love all you mothers. Oh, and speaking of Samuel back here, he was born on the same day I was born. Only how many years le later? Uh, Pretty close. <laughs> because I'm going to turn 80 here. And he's going to turn, uh, what? 10. That's right, 10. So, when I first met him, he did not want nothing to do with me. <laughs> not a thing. In fact, he screamed to his mom and dad, to, don't let me go to this guy. Don't let him no, he, he wasn't talking, but uh, he was just a little baby. But after he got older, I got the opportunity to tell him we were born on God's two favorite numbers, <laughs> seven and 12. That's the numbers you'll read in the Bible more than any other numbers. We're very fortunate, buddy. We're very fortunate. God is with us. everybody? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what else do you have to tell? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Very good. Good job. Thank you, Jojo. <laughs> and I, I thank each and every person. Thank you for honoring uh, your fathers and your mothers. In Leviticus 19, it says, uh, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. So honor your father and mother. You guys did that today. And in honoring your father and mother, when you honor your father and mother, you honor the God 
who called you, commanded you to honor your father and your mother. So you're honoring God when you honor your father and your mother. So continue to honor God in doing that. And if you're a child, obey your parents in the, in the Lord. Do you know that verse? I'm going to put you on the spot. What's Ephesians 6 1, Jojo? Ephesians 6 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is right. Amen. <laughs> Very good. Okay. <laughs> Sam, you got you got you got somebody waiting in the wings to take that trophy, buddy. <laughs> Keep working hard. Uh, both of my kids strive to to memorize God's word. I'm very, very proud of them. Um, the other verse that, I, that I've got here uh, as, as we conclude, as we leave this, this morning here is, and my encouragement is for mothers to not grow weary in doing good. And maybe I'm thinking of my own wife, especially this morning. Uh, Galatians 6, 9, you know, tells us to let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Now, yes, that is in our walk, our ambassadorship, our discipleship of the Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I, I understand that. But as a mother, your role in raising your children is part of your ambassadorship. It's part of your discipleship. It's part of the call of God on your life. And it is huge. All of the teaching, all of the loving, all of the disciplining, all of the driving to different functions and games and events, all the late nights, all the unexpected sickness, all the mistakes and failures, all the successes, all of the continual prayers, the meals made, the clothes washed, the money spent, all of the sacrifice and investment that you make on behalf of your children is an expression to the world of a God who's done each and every one of those things continually for each and every one of us. So I want to honor mothers and encourage you, don't grow weary in doing good. You will, reap a, you will reap a harvest in due time. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We honor and glorify you. God, you who created moms and Lord, each and every other testimony that wasn't related to motherhood, God, you wrote that testimony, to, that testimony as well. God, you were in the middle of it. You orchestrated it. You empowered it. And to you we give the glory. As we go down with the rest of the congregation, Lord, let Jesus Christ be glorified. In our hearts, in our minds, with our words, God, as we love and serve you by loving and serving one another. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.